Okay, uh, so now let's talk about another very important functions that in SQL, so that is called aggreg aggregation functions. Uh, so you can find out more details uh, from this page. So again, I highly recommend that the, the tutorials that from the uh, SQL, close uh, to circle SQL. Okay, so aggregation functions can perform a calculation on set of rows and retain a single row. Okay, on a set of rows and also retain a single row. So those are some of the very commonly used aggregation functions. And I think it's the mean is pretty standforward. So average the number of different records. So that does not include the null values. Okay, it does not include the null values, uh, the maximal value, the minimal value, and also uh, the the sum, uh, and also there are also other some type of the ag aggregation functions. Uh, so the syntax is like this. So you can say, for example, if you want count, so based on which column do you want count, and from which table, and you can also apply the where conditions and uh, etc. Okay, so you can also apply the where conditions. And let's see one example here. So here I want count. So first I want uh, the calculation is based, based on in row list. Okay, so based on the in row list. And I want count that how many different students. Remember that student email stands for different types of student. So I want count the number of the student. And I put the result as enroll the number of enroll from this student list and also I want to say okay where the cost number will start with I the cost number will start with I so that's why I called I enroll okay so that's why I called RA enroll and the result is two so that means when I the result that I mean I have two students that enrolled as uh, in this class into the uh, into I class. Okay, uh, so let's see an example that in PG admin. So let's say we want actually uh, it, the SQL is not case sensitive. So let's see how my enroll list look like. Demo dot enroll list again. So this is my account I use demo accounts I use a demo schema so you should use your schema when you are doing the exercise okay uh, so here you can see here um, I have this uh, enroll list so I have five records and three students taking I340 and also two students are taking GO uh, uh, 200 uh, so here I can see okay I say, select count Okay, and so if you you can count star, so count star just simply retain that number of the records, so number of records that you have. Okay, so here you can see star just simply retain number of records, and you can give it a, a name so as. Okay, so number of the records. You can see the number of records star is five. Okay. So that means I have five records. And if you count the student email, okay, student email, it is the same result. So because I have five student emails, okay, so I have five student emails. So um, although the email might be, uh, some might be the similar emails, but uh, they just give it, okay, we do have five not noun emails. If you want to find out the unique emails and there's a, a, a function called distinct, so distinct emails, so you can see count distinct emails and you can see here I have three unique emails. Well, there are also other ways that you can count unique values. Okay, uh, so here I can see I can count. Okay, so here I have five students in this enroll list. And also I can apply the where clause. So if I just want to count where 
the cost number in cost I 340. I want to see how many students enrolled to this class. You can see, okay, I have three students enrolled to this class. And if I want to see how many students not enrolled, so this stands for does not equal, to, so not enrolled to this one. And you can see I have two students that not enrolled into this class. Okay, and back to our example. So if I want to see that how many students that enrolled that start like I, okay, and as percentage that just represent any other possible characters. And okay, so this should be like. Okay, so now I have three students that are enrolled to this class, or to the I class. And you can change this one to I enroll, so if that makes sense. Okay, so I enroll, I have three, three students that enrolled into class that start with I. Okay, uh, so in most cases, we are using the aggregation function together with group Okay, so that we can group in data based on the same values. So we have a group by class that can divide rows into groups and we can apply aggregation functions on each of those groups. Okay, so the syntax is that you can select one column and you can apply the ag aggregation function to another column and tell which table you are talking from, uh, you are talking about, and you can group by the first column. Okay, uh, so that is group by function. And so before I say one example, so again, you can also apply uh, the criteria for the group, but for the group, grouped records, if you want to apply criteria, you cannot use a where clause, but instead you should use having clause. Okay, so having clause can apply conditions for the groups. Okay, so having clause is similar like where clause, but it's applying conditions uh, to the groups. So here that, uh, so normally you should put uh, the having clause um, after the group by. So here you see we select two columns. The second column is where we apply the aggregation function. And we group by the first column, uh, column and then we are defined the uh, conditions by using the having clause. Okay, uh, let's see one example. So let's say that, can, can we understand the, the result first? Okay, uh, so here I'm counting, I'm still count the, uh, the number of students that are enrolled. However, I want to see that for different type of a class, I want to see how many students got enrolled. Okay, so see here I want to say, okay, I want select so for, I want select cost number. For each class, I, for each class, I want to count number of different student emails or number of student emails. So it can be duplicated. Okay, and this count, I will give it a new name as enroll. And then those information will from this enroll list, which is grouped by okay the cost uh, cost number okay so then it will return okay for different type of classes how many students are enrolled into those different classes and then i can use this uh, having function so if i just i'm just interested in um say the class that is i start with i so that i can apply the having condition so that, okay, so here you can see the final result that for I340, I do have two students that enrolled. Okay, uh, so let's see that example. So, so see here we want to see select. First, we want to see the cost name. And here we need to apply uh, an aggregation function. So here we want to count student email as, so here I just say, okay, that is enroll number or 
number of students okay and from from my demo enrollees okay so now let's see it uh, okay so okay so the cost enrollees it is a cost number And I can, you can see this is pretty good. So as you can see the arrow scene, okay, the cost name does not exist. Perhaps you meant to call that enroll list cost number. Okay, so that I really like those those errors. So the hint are very very helpful. And okay, so as email. as email and I forgot the group by function <laughs> okay you can see arrows so those appear to in a group by class so that remind me that I should use this group by function and Okay, finally it worked. Okay, um, so here you can see. Okay, so I have I. That is a so I have three students enrolled into I three forty, and also I have two students enrolled into I, uh, GOG, uh, two one two fifteen. Okay, so that's nice. Um, we can also try using the having function. Let's see, having, where the C, number equals 340 so only in the first one okay in this case it is case sensitive so the value are case sensitive okay and all you can see that any cost number that start with i okay start with i so it will also return the same result okay um another thing that I want to point out is that so for the aggregated result you can also apply the other um method that we have learned for example the, the order the sort by etc so for example if I want order by the number of students descending so I want to see the the one that has the most students enrolled it worked and and if I want to use ascending okay so GOG is the first one and also I can want to see the limit so here if I want to see okay so which class has a has a the fewest number of students the least number of students I can try that and here I can say okay GOG has the least number of the students okay uh, so that is how we can group data and also we can use aggregation functions so those are also some very powerful uh, features in SQL